on my quest to find an answer to all the revenge that's going on in this region. I meet Najib Atiyah, a Palestinian pastor whose son survived the bomb that went off prematurely in his face. I want to know more about life on the edge, always expecting a bomb, anywhere, anytime. And who can explain that better to me than Hugh? He emigrated here from Ireland and just finished his time in the Israeli army. In England my life was very comfortable. I didn't have to worry about anything. The most I had to worry about was street violence and that was it. Uh, here it's, uh, it's always on your mind. You know that uh, depending on what's going on around you in the day or what's going on in Israel that day, uh, there could be an attack any time, that evening or that morning or that afternoon. Unfortunately, uh, here and abroad, it's become an everyday thing, and people have just accepted it as something that happens in Israel, that people die on buses, or people die in a cafe. So the occupation is uh, its a purely defensive uh, move by the army and by the, uh, the state. I think as soon as the army moves out of there, and the sooner everyone will be happy. Terrorism has to be fought. And uh, either you wait and you wait for it to come to your hometown, or you go to its hometown and you fight it there. I mean, I don't know if it's a, a known uh, statistic, but one out of 20 suicide attacks is successful these days, whereby 19 out of every 20 attempts are stopped either at checkpoints or they're stopped on buses, or they're stopped uh, in the bomb workshops in the Palestinian territories. So from the people who are leading the, uh, the intifada and leading the war on uh, the Jewish state and the Israelis, for them the goal is not to get back their land uh, within the West Bank and Gaza. The goal is to take over the whole of Israel and to take over the Jewish state so that there will be none. And that's their goal, you know, they don't... Uh, I think if we gave back all of Aza and gave back all of the West Bank, it wouldn't stop there. I wonder if Hugh's opinion would change if he was living under occupation. Soldiers know what it's like being under attack. Strangely enough, so do Palestinian ambulance drivers. Um, we were just driving by over here and just bumped into this little shop and the owner apparently is an ambulance driver who got injured while caring for other people and he was like, oh, let's film you, so uh, let's go and talk to him. He's got quite an interesting story. Adnan was caught in a crossfire between Palestinian protesters and the Israeli army. He says he was shot from an Israeli helicopter while trying to rescue the injured. This is the bullet that is prohibited internationally. It goes into the body and it explodes. I mean, look how big this is. And it's already a bit broken around here. This is huge. This is all the blood you can see over here. And, and it, oh, this is all just one big hole. And it's black. It's, he, he was telling us it was smoking. So all the veins down here in pieces, and they just chopped into bits. I am impressed by his positive attitude, opening a shop to support himself. It's remarkable considering what's happened to him. These are all the shrapnel pieces from the bullet that, once they hit the bone, they would 
explode and just send the bone into all into powder, basically, and just send it to pieces, which will, which causes a gap inside their um, in their leg, which sometimes uh, it's about two to three inches of, of nothing. This ambulance driver says the Israeli army are terrorists. The Israelis say the Palestinians who are terrorists. If we can't agree on what terrorism is, how can we stop it? I don't know if there's much you can do to stop terrorism at the moment. To change the beliefs and values, the culture of those who engage in terrorism. Push the button and destroy the human race. Believe that terrorism is wrong, morally wrong, and to teach that. If you give the alternative of violence, violence will be stopped. No solution. will never be a peace. Never. Let the woman control the world. What am I talking אני חושב שתכלס אתה עושה כבר, אני רוצה לראות איזשהו חלק מהטרור עם הסרט המצחיק הזה שאנחנו מצלמים כרגע. where he live and in his home and but to make a 10 years boy walk with a bomb on him this is too much crazy this is uh, trying to think about it this is crazy uh, I think it's only a brainwash you don't need much of a brainwash when you're living in an open-air prison and one of the latest additions to this prison is a disputed separation wall Many Palestinians I met were outraged by the building of this wall. But they know deep inside that it won't last forever. Many people compare this wall to the Berlin Wall. But to be honest, the Berlin Wall looks like a picket fence compared to this one. I will stay here, I can move, I will stay here, I will suffer like Everybody all uh, 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 others are uh, suffering, will suffer, and all together we are struggling in order to destroy the wall. You know, they are saying that this wall is, uh, is for security reasons and it will be, uh, these days they are talking about the green line. Here in Jerusalem, no wall, no track can be constructed without separating families. The population is living. You are talking about separating people, separating, splitting families. It is snacking inside the Palestinian land, confiscating land, creating facts for the future, saying you Palestinians should live in claves, should live in the Palestinian state, which is dwarf, and many Bantu stands like in uh, uh, South Africa. We are talking about eight meters high of uh, 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 cement uh, batonets. places where we have walls is the places where the dangerous is too high to put a fence. This is the fence, this is the, we're gonna have it like this all the time right now. In Calcilia you have a a uh, small piece of wall in the western side of the city. The reason for this is because it's nearby to a very important uh, road in Israel that a lot of uh, cars drive there. Life over here isn't easy. However, the people here seem to have good ideas in solving the conflict. It seems to me that it's the leaders who are fighting in the name of their people and making it worse for everyone. As long as these leaders are in power, the conflict will go on and on. 
I was impressed by the people suffering directly from it. How unvengeful they are. Maybe one day, someone somewhere will think of a more constructive way for them to settle their differences. Many Israelis know that the wall, assassinations and checkpoints have never stopped terrorism. And many Palestinians know that suicide bombings will never grant them any freedom, nor an independent state. Imagine, in these turbulent days, that the Israelis were Adam and the Palestinians were Eve. There would have never been a human race.